Hello friends my name is Arshan and today we are going to do the first chapter of your social science textbook of NCERT the name of the first chapter is equality in indian democracy now carefully notice the pictures of these people you can see manjeet kaur who is a teacher you can see tejas singh who is a trader by profession girish rao who is a student also kanta devi a domestic worker and sujata kumari which is a domestic worker as well can you notice the different background of these people can you notice the different treatment these people get in society based on different factors let us learn about equality india is a democracy in the class 6th book we have looked at the key elements of a democratic government these include people's participation the resolution of a conflict and equality and justice equality is a key feature of democracy and influences all aspects of its functioning in this chapter you will read more about equality and what it is and why it is important in a democracy to have everyone as equal let us begin by looking at kanta's story on election day kanta and her friend sujata are waiting to cast their votes kanta says to sujata isn't it good suja that we can all vote as equal citizens of our country even jain sahab is standing in the line with us suja says yes then suja says to kanta go on kanta it's your turn now in the polling booth kanta thinks to herself i will vote for the candidate who has promised to bring pipe water to our area afterwards from his car jain sahab shouted we will see you later kanta and kanta replied yes namaste saheb on returning they talked Gudiya has been running fever and I have to take her to the hospital but I will have to finish the work at Saheb's house first and ask for some advance at home here Gudiya have some tea of this you will feel better and when I get back in the evening we will go to the hospital okay it is no wonder that Gudiya falls ill often this basti is never cleaned at the Saheb's house the homeowner said to the Kanta make sure Kanta to do the corners properly then Kanta ask for some advance now Mem Sahab said to Kanta here's your advance Kanta but don't make a habit of it Kanta replies no madam that similar evening Kanta was in the line of the hospital with gudiya in her hands she said just a few more minutes beti just a few more minutes Kanta starts thinking in her head Jain madam and Jain Sahab may stand in line to vote but they never have to do it when their children are sick We have read the story of Kanta students the story above of Kanta standing in line to cast her vote look at her again at the various people who are standing in line with her Kanta can recognize her employer Ashok Jain and Chote Lal her neighbor in a democratic country like India all adults irrespective of what religion they belong to how much education they had what caste they are or whether they are rich or poor are allowed to vote this as you have already read in class 6 book is called universal adult franchise i will repeat it is called universal adult franchise and is an universal adult franchise essential aspect of all democracies the idea of universal adult franchise is based on the ideas of equality because it states that every adult in a country irrespective of their wealth and community he or she belongs to has one vote kanta is excited to vote and happy that she is equal to all of the others because each of them has one vote but as the day goes on kanta becomes less certain about what this equality really means what do you think what is it that kanta is unsure about let us take a look at a day in her life she lives in a slum has a drain behind her house her daughter is sick but she cannot take the day off from work because she needs to borrow money from her employers to take her child to the doctor her job as a domestic help tires her out and finally she ends her day by again standing in a long line this line in front of the government hospital is unlike the one in the morning because most of the people standing in it are poor 
Now, do you students think that Kanta has enough reason to doubt whether she really is equal or not? Can you people list three reasons from the story that I just told you that might make her feel like this? Think about this student and even make points. Now, let us uh, learn about other kinds of equality. Kanta is one of many people who live in a democratic country like India and who have the right to vote but whose daily living and working conditions are far from equal. Apart from being poor, people in India experience inequality in different ways. Let us see what this means by listening to these stories, which I will tell now. Each of these stories is based on real incidents in people's life and reflects the different kind of inequalities that exist in our beloved nation India. One of the most common forms of inequality in India is the caste system. If you live in rural India, your caste identity is something that you probably learned or experienced very young. If you live in urban India, some of you might think that people no longer believe in caste. But just look at these matrimonials shown from a leading English newspaper and you will see how important the issue of caste continues to be in the minds of highly educated urban Indians. Take a look at these examples. Now, let us listen to this story about the experiences of a Dalit child attending school. You have already read about the Dalits in class 6 book, right students? Dalit is a term we know that means so called uh, used for so called lower caste and to address them. Dalit literally means broken and by using this word, lower caste are pointing to how they were and continue to be seriously discriminated against. Now I will tell you a story about Om Prakash Valmiki. Om Prakash Valmiki is a famous Dalit writer. In his autobiography Jhutan, he writes, I had to sit away from the others in the class and that too on the floor. The mat ran out before reaching the spot I sat on. Sometimes I would have to sit way behind everybody, right near the door. Sometimes they would beat me without any reason. When Om Prakash was in class 6, the headmaster asked Om Prakash to sweep the school and the playground. He writes, the playground was way larger than my small physique could handle and in cleaning it, my back began to ache. My face was covered with dust. Dust had gone inside my mouth. The other children in my class were studying and I was sweeping. Headmaster was sitting in his room and watching me. I was not even allowed to get a drink of water. I swept the whole day. From the doors and windows of the schoolrooms, the eyes of the teachers and the boys saw this spectacle. Om Prakash was made to sweep the school and the playground for the next couple of days and this only came to an end when his father, who happened to be passing by, saw his son sweeping. He confronted the teachers and then walking away from the school, Holding Om Prakash's hand, he said loudly for all of them to hear, You are a teacher, so I am leaving now. But remember this much, Master. He will study right here in this school and not just him, but there will be more coming after him. Now students, why do you think Om Prakash Valmiki was being treated unequally by his teacher and his classmates? Can you write a reason? And Imagine yourself as Om Prakash Valmiki and write four lines about how you would feel if you were in the same situation as him. Write this in your notebook. Now it's a time for a second story. The second story is based on an incident that took place in one of India's larger cities and is common practice in most parts of our country. It is a story about Mr. and Mrs. Ansari who were looking to rent an apartment in the city. They had the money and so paying the rent was no problem. They went to a property dealer for help to find a place. The dealer informed them that he knew about quite a few apartments that were available for rent. 
They visited the first apartment and the Ansaris liked it very much and decided to take it. However, when the landlady found out their names, she made an excuse about how she could not rent the house to someone who ate meat because the building did not have any non-vegetarian residents. Both the Ansaris and the property dealer were surprised to hear this because they could smell fish being cooked in the neighbor's house. The same excuse was repeated in the second and third apartments as well. Finally, the property dealer told them that they might want to change their names and call themselves Mr. and Mrs. Kumar. The Ansaris were reluctant to do this and decided to look some more. In the end, it took a whole month of looking at apartments before they found a landlady who was willing to give them a place on rent. Now students, why do you think the Ansaris were being treated unequally? What would you do if you were in the Ansaris position and could not find a place to live because some people did not want to live next to you or because of the religion you practice? Make a note of these points in your textbook as well. Also, if you were one of the Ansaris, how would you respond to the suggestion that you change your name? Can you students think of an incident in your life in which your dignity was violated? How did this make you feel? Take a note of this in your textbook. Now talking about dignity, let us learn more about that. You have understood that by now, the caste we are born in, the religion we practice, the class background we come from, whether we are a male or a female, these are often the things that determine why some people are treated unequally. Om Prakash Valmiki and the Ansaris are being treated unequally on the basis of differences of caste and religion. When persons are treated unequally, their dignity is violated. The dignity of both Om Prakash Valmiki and the Ansaris was violated because of the way in which they were treated. By picking on him and making him sweep the school, because of his caste, Om Prakash Valmiki's schoolmates and teachers hurt his dignity badly and made him feel as if he was less than equal to all the other students in the class. Being a child, Om Prakash Valmiki could do very little about the situation that he was in. It was his father who, on seeing his son sweep, felt angry and by this unequal treatment, he confronted the teacher. The Ansari's dignity was also hurt when persons refused to lease their apartments to them. However, when the property dealer suggested that they change their name, it was their dignity or self-respect that made them refuse this suggestion. Om Prakash and the Ansaris do not deserve to be treated like this. They deserve the same respect and dignity as anyone else. Talking about this, now let us learn about equality in Indian democracy. The Indian constitution recognizes every person as equal. This means that every individual in the country including male, female persons from all caste, religion, tribes, educational and economic backgrounds are recognized as equal. This is not to say that inequality ceases to exist. It doesn't. But at least in democratic India, the principle of the equality of all persons is recognized. While earlier no law existed to protect people from discrimination and ill treatment, now, there are several that work to see the people are treated with dignity and as equals. The recognition of equality includes some of the following provisions in the constitution. First, that every person is equal before the law. What this means is that every person from the president of the country to Kanta, a simple domestic worker, has to obey the same laws. Second one, no person can be discriminated against on the basis of their religion, race, caste, place of birth or whether they are male or female. And the third one, every person has access to all public places 
including playgrounds, hotels, shops, and markets. All persons can use publicly available wells, roads, and bathing ghats. Fourth, untouchability has been abolished. Let us recall these points as these are very important. What are these points? The what is the first law? The first law is that every person from the president of the country to Kanta, which is a Indian citizen, has to obey the same laws. What was the second one? That no person can be discriminated against on the basis of their religion, race, caste, place of birth, or their gender. The third one being that every person has access to all public places. And the fourth one, and very important one, about the untouchability, which has been abolished. The two ways in which the government has tried to implement the equality that is guaranteed in the constitution is first through laws and second through government programs or schemes to help disadvantaged communities. There are several laws in India that protect every person's right to be treated equally. In addition to laws, the government has also set up several schemes to improve the lives of communities and individuals who have been treated unequally for several centuries. These schemes are to ensure greater opportunity for people who have not had this in the past. One of the steps taken by the government includes the midday meal scheme. You might have heard about this. This refers to the program introduced in all government elementary schools to provide children with cooked lunch. Tamil Nadu was the first state in India to introduce this scheme. And in 2001, the Supreme Court asked all state governments to begin this program in their schools within six months. This program has had many positive effects. These include the fact that more poor children have begun enrolling and regularly attending schools. Teacher reported that earlier children would often go home for lunch and then not return to school. But now, with the midday meal being provided in school, their attendance has improved. Their mothers, who earlier had to interrupt their work to feed their children at home during the day, now no longer need to do so. This program has also helped reduce caste prejudices because both lower and upper caste children in the school eat this meal together and in quite a few places Dalit women have been employed to cook the meal. The midday meal program also helps reduce the hunger of poor students who often come to school and cannot concentrate because their stomachs are empty. While the government programs play an important role in increasing equality of opportunity, there is much that still needs to be done. While the midday meal program has helped increase the enrollment and attendance of poor children in school, there continues to be big differences in our country between schools that the rich attend and those that the poor attend. Even today, there are several schools in the country in which Dalit children like Om Prakash Valmiki are discriminated against and treated unequally. These children are forced into unequal situations in which their dignity is not respected. This is because people refuse to think of them as equal, even though the law requires it. Now students, can you list a few points where tell me? Now students, can you list a few points telling that how this program might help promote greater equality? To continue this topic, one of the main reasons for this is the attitude of the people changes very slowly. Even though persons are aware that discrimination is against the law, they continue to treat people unequally on the basis of their caste, religion, disability, economic status, or sometimes only because of the fact that they are women. It is only when people begin to believe that no one is inferior and that every person deserves to be treated with dignity that present attitudes can change. Establishing equality in a democratic society is a continuous struggle and one in which individuals as well as various communities in India contribute to. You will read more about this 
in this book of yours of social science now student like everything in life nothing is there without its own complications and disadvantages so there are some issues of equality in other democracies as well you are probably wondering whether india is the only democratic country in the world in which there is inequality and where the struggle for equality continues to exist in 21st century the truth is that in many democratic countries around the world the issue of equality continues to be the key issue around which communities struggle so for example in the united states of america usa the african americans whose ancestors were the slaves who were brought over from africa continues to describe their lives today as largely unequal this despite the fact that there was a movement in the late 1950s to push for equal rights for african americans prior to this african americans were treated extremely unequally in the united states and denied equality through law for example when traveling by bus they either had to sit at the back of the bus or get up from their seat whenever a white person wished to sit rosa parks was an african american woman tired from a long day at work she refused to give up her seat on a bus to a white woman on 1st of december 1955 her refusal that day started a huge agitation against the unequal ways in which african americans were treated and which came to be known as the civil rights movements in america the civil rights movement rights act of 1964 prohibited discrimination on the basis of race religion or national origin it also stated that all schools would be open to african american children and that they would no longer have to attend separate schools specially set up for them however despite this a majority of african americans continue to be among the poorest in the country most african american children can only afford to attend government schools that have fewer facilities and are poorly qualified teachers as compared to white students who either go to private schools or live in areas where the government schools are as highly rated as private schools do you students know that the movement of blm black lives matter was related to this sort which happened in the year 2020 think about that and write about that in your notebook as well now let us talk about the challenges of democracy no country can be described as being completely democratic there cannot be anything which is 100% perfect there are always communities and individuals trying to expand the idea of democracy and push for a greater recognition of equality on existing as well as new issues central to this is the struggle for the recognition of all persons as equal and for their dignity to be maintained in this book we will read about and we will learn about how this issues of equality affects various aspects of our daily lives in democratic country as we will learn about these things in different different chapters from this book you can think about whether the equality of all persons and their being able to maintain their dignity is upheld now let us have a quick recap of the important things and the topics in this chapter starting straight away from the universal adult franchise what was it can you recall it it was very important aspect of democratic society meaning that those who are 18 and above or the adult citizens have the right to vote irrespective of their social or economic backgrounds we have learned a lot about in this chapter about dignity what is the meaning of dignity it can be referred to as thinking of oneself and other person as worthy of respect also we have learned about the constitutional laws which are there for upholding the dignity and equality in our democratic country india we have also learned about the movements which happened for example the civil right movements in usa in india and in around the world we have also learned 
about the movements which happened in USA demanding the equal rights for all the citizens. We have also learned about different sorts of schemes, for example, midday meal schemes in this chapter, which were made by the government of India to ensure that every citizen is being treated with dignity and with equality. With all these things that we have learned in this chapter, now I believe students that you will also think about equality and dignity in your society, in your community and in the public places when you visit too. After learning all these things, always take time to revise your chapters. Till then, I will take your leave. Bye-bye.